In this video, we're going to distinguish between the difference between a shift in the demand curve and a movement along the demand curve. So to guide us today, we're going to actually use a question from a quiz that I recently gave my own students. The question is, state the law of demand and distinguish between a movement along the demand curve and a shift of the demand curve. Here we see the law of demand. Notice the words in red. These are the key words that relate to the demand for a good or service. We can illustrate the law of demand on a simple demand diagram as a downward sloping demand curve, showing the inverse relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded. In this case, we're going to talk about, once again, the demand for ice cream. Assume that the price per scoop of ice cream is high, say $4. At a high price, the quantity demanded is very low, while at a lower price, say $2, the quantity demanded increases. In this way, we can see the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. As the price of ice cream falls, the quantity that consumers demand decreases. On the other hand, if the price of ice cream were to increase from $2 to $4, the quantity demanded would decrease, showing the law of demand. With the law of demand in mind, we can see that a change in the price of a good causes a movement along a demand curve, but not a change in demand itself. So the second part of our question is what can cause a shift of the demand curve? A shift of demand is illustrated simply as either an increase, if demand shifts to the right, we'll call this D1, and I'll put a red arrow there showing demand increasing, or demand can decrease which is illustrated as a leftward shift or an inward shift of the demand curve. So what does a shift in demand mean? Simply, it means that at each of the original prices, a greater or lesser quantity is demanded. As we can see here, with the decrease in demand, a lower quantity is demanded at $4. However, with an increase in demand, a greater quantity than before is demanded at $4. In this way, we can see that when demand increases or decreases, the quantity changes even if the original price remains the same. So what can cause a change in the demand for a good? A shift in the demand for a good or service occurs anytime a non-price determinant of demand changes. This refers to factors such as the tastes and preferences of consumers. For example, if ice cream becomes more popular because of uh, a report that says that its health effects are actually positive. Uh, secondly, the change in the price of other related goods. Now, this has two effects. A good could be related to ice cream in that it is a substitute, or it can be a complementary good. If the price of a substitute increases, such as frozen yogurt, it would be expected that the demand for ice cream would increase. On the other hand, if a substitute became cheaper, demand for ice cream might decrease. A complementary good includes things such as uh, chocolate sauce, which goes on top of ice cream, or ice cream cones or sprinkles. The relationship between the price of a complementary good and the demand for ice cream is an inverse relationship. If complementary goods become more expensive, the demand for a good like ice cream would fall. The third non-price determinant of demand is the expectations of consumers of future prices or future income. For example, if consumers expect the price of ice cream to rise in the future, they would be more likely to ban demand more ice cream now. If they expect ice cream to get cheaper in the future, they would demand less ice cream now. Thirdly, we have the incomes of consumers. Most people would say that ice cream is what is called a normal good. A normal good is a good that has a direct relationship between the income of its consumers and the demand for the good. So as incomes rise, the demand for ice cream rises. However, some goods might be considered inferior goods. If a good is an inferior good, it demonstrates an inverse relationship between demand and income, meaning that as incomes fall, demand rises. Next on our determinants of demand, the size of the market. This one is perhaps the most obvious because it simply refers to the number of consumers for a particular good. If there are more consumers for a good, the demand is greater. If there are fewer consumers for a good, 
the demand will be less. Finally, we can say that some sorts of special circumstances might determine the demand for certain goods. My class came up with some ideas such as global warming, an unusual heat wave, or perhaps a cold spell in the middle of summer. Any of these things can cause demand for ice cream to either increase or decrease. So what we've just shown are the, the six non-price determinants of demand for a good. The good we've talked about today is ice cream, but you could talk about any good or service and come up with examples of each of these and how they might affect the demand for a good. Tastes and preferences, other related goods prices, the expectations of consumers, the incomes of consumers, the size of the market, and special circumstances. The next part of this quiz asks students to explain the effect that an increase in the price of a product, specifically petrol, would have on three different markets. So this part of the quiz actually tested whether students could distinguish between a change in the price of a good which causes a change in the quantity demanded and a change in a non-price determinant for a good, which affects the demand for the good. So we're gonna look at the effect of higher petrol prices on three different markets. The first mark being, market being petrol itself. In the market for petrol, an increase in the price is an increase in price. Therefore, there's no change in the demand for petrol. Rather, the quantity demanded for petrol changes as the price increases. Specifically, the and it decreases as price increases, supporting the law of demand, showing an inverse relationship between price and quantity. So on our graph, I simply show a higher price, an arrow indicating the price increases, and a lower quantity, and an arrow indicating that the quantity decreases. So it's simply a movement along demand for petrol. There is not a new demand, rather a change in the quantity demanded. The second part of this question asks the effect of a higher petrol price on the market for automobiles. Cars are clearly a complementary good for petrol. You can't drive a car without using petrol. Therefore, the relationship is an inverse relationship between the price of petrol and the demand for automobiles. So rather than causing a movement along the demand curve, this represents a non-price determinant of demand for petrol. Sorry, for automobiles, because it's not the price of automobiles that is changing. Rather, it is the price of a complementary good. So an increase in the price of petrol will actually cause a shift in the demand for automobiles, showing that at each previous price, original price, there will be a less quantity or a lower quantity demanded for cars due to higher petrol prices. This, of course, is because it is now more expensive to drive cars. So there has been a change in the non-price determinant of demand for cars. Specifically, the price of a related good. In this case, a complementary good. Finally, we want to examine the effect of higher petrol prices on a market for an other related good, in this case, biodiesel. Biodiesel is a fuel that could be used instead of petrol to power some automobiles. So we can see that biodiesel is actually a substitute good for petrol. Therefore, we would expect that as petrol prices rise, consumers will switch to its substitute, biodiesel. Therefore, the demand for biodiesel increases, indicating that even if the price of biodiesel were not to change, the quantity that consumers would wish to demand would increase, in this case, from Q1 to Q2. Now, of course, the explanation for this, again, is that a non-price determinant of demand for biodiesel changed, in this case, the price of a related good. Rather than petrol and diesel being uh, complements for each other, they are substitutes for each other. Therefore, as the price of petrol rises, demand for biodiesel increases. The determinant of demand we're discussing here is a related good price, but in this case, we're talking about a substitute good. To conclude this lesson, let's quickly review what we went over. We saw that there is a difference between the change in the quantity demanded for a good, which results from a change in price, and a change in the demand for a good, which results in a change in one of our non-price determinants of demand, as we can see here. Now, as an illustration of this, we talked about the effect 
of an increase in the price of petrol. In the market for petrol, we see that a higher price causes the quantity demanded to decrease for petrol, as seen in the graph on the left. However, in the market for related goods, in this case automobiles, a higher price for petrol causes demand to fall since automobiles and petrol are complements for each other. In the market for a substitute for petrol, such as biodiesel, higher petrol prices cause the demand for biodiesel to increase since that's a substitute for biodiesel that consumers can use to power the cars instead of the now more expensive petrol. So to summarize, we distinguish between the law of demand, which illustrates the inverse relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded, and the determinants of demand, which can cause the demand for a good to either increase or decrease.